I first started covering a drought in 2014. In pertaining to Lake Oroville, at that time it was 32% capacity, which is pretty low. It's not as low as it is now. You really have to pay attention to the weather if you're going to go up and cover cover the lakes, uh, clear sky or rain clouds. You know everything brings a whole new element to it. But I think the thing that's the most difficult right now is covering with the smoke from the fires because everything just gets flat. I think I'm just kind of shocked that it has gotten so bad so fast this time around. The way that the water was draining out of there was very, it was very evident and it was month to month, you could see actual decline. And since I first visited in April, it was at 42% and this morning I was at 24%. Burville does sort of top the list of places and things that will really resonate with people. This, you know, is a source for thousands and hundreds of thousands of people throughout the state. There are a few uh, parts of the lake that really show the drought more than others. And one of them is from Enterprise Bridge, which kind of shows one of the, the fingers that comes off the main body of the lake. And this is now just like a canyon, basically, uh, that is virtually empty. So that is a uh, marina, the Bidwell Marina at Lake Oroville, where they have dozens and dozens of houseboats that, that, that anchor there when the water levels get so low they have to start removing those boats this is pretty widespread about who's uh, who's affected by this a lot of um, farmers in the central valley are now knocking down their trees a lot of uh, cattle ranchers and dairy farmers are culling their herds to sell them off because they just can't afford to keep putting water into those systems I want people to be aware that, that, that this is a real issue, that this is not something that just happens to one part of the state or one part of the country. This is like a, kind of a widespread problem, I would argue to say outside even this country.